Hello and welcome to our presentation on quadratic inequalities. So before I go on, I want to say, you know, I'm assuming here that, that you have some experience with quadratics. And if you don't, maybe go back and look at some of our other videos on this topic. Because here we really want to kind of step forward and look at specifically how to deal with inequalities like this one right here. So what do we do? Well, the first thing I might do is subtract 8 from both sides. Now, why would I do that? Well, of course, with an inequality, we subtract from both sides to keep everything balanced. But when I do this, right, 8 minus 8 is 0, right? And over here, I will get x squared minus 2x minus 8. And that's useful to me because this is in a pretty typical quadratic standard format. Because now what I can do is factor out my terms. And here, to find the roots to factor out, I would set up my parentheses, right? X goes here for me. And I'm looking for factors of negative 8 that add up to negative 2. So I'm going to choose the factors negative 4, right? And positive 2. Because negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. And negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. So I factor the quadratic. And now I'm saying that the product of these two has to, excuse me, has to be less than 0. And now things, you know, here we are tempted, I think, to memorize these next steps. But I want you to step back and, and remember and think about what's happening. Imagine we're multiplying two numbers, right? So maybe um, x times y. If I told you that the product of these two numbers is less than 0, what can you conclude? Well, if you remember what it means for a number to be less than 0, of course that means this product is negative. Right? It's a negative product. And there are only two ways, right, to get to take two real numbers, multiply them, and get a negative, a negative product. Um, the first case is that you have a positive times a negative, or you have a negative times a positive, right? One of those two things has to happen. So what do we do? Well, here what we can do is we can assume that x plus two, right, is our first number x. So that, x plus 2, if it's positive, it's greater than 0. And then we solve for x, and x is greater than negative 2. Now, if this first term is positive, this second term would have to be negative, right? Because that means that we have a positive times a negative, whatever these two things are, and that product is less than 0. So now x minus 4 has to be less than zero, right? It has to be a negative number because we're saying assume the first one's positive. Now the second one's negative. In that case, x is less than four. So in order for the product of these two terms to be less than zero, x would have to be greater than negative two and less than four. Now, what does that mean? Well, if we look at this on a number line, right? set this up. x is greater than negative 2, so here's negative 2. And x is less than 4, so here's maybe 0, and here is 4 up here. We're saying that x basically has to be between these two numbers. So what I would do is put an open circle here, an open circle there, and a line between. This is telling me that x can be any number between negative 2 and 4. Right? If it's between there, well, then it's a solution to this quadratic. And, and you could try it. You could plug it in. Um, for example, if I plug in the number, let's say, 1. Right? If I plug it into this equation, I get 1 squared, right up here, 1 squared minus 2 times 1, which is 2. Is that less than 8? Well, yes. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And negative 1 is less than 8. So that number works. Right? Pick any value in here, and it will plug in and work for this quadratic. But we're not done. Right? All we did there was look at this first combination. When you have a positive times a negative, we could reverse this. Instead of x plus 2 being the positive value, x plus 2 could be less than 0. What does that mean? Well, then x would be less than negative 2. And then what else could we do? Well, 
if this is negative, then this has to be positive. Why? Because, well, here again, this whole analogy of x times y, one number times another, it applies right here. We have one number times another number. So if we assume the first one's negative, the second one has to be positive because the product is less than zero. So now we assume, well, x minus 4 is bigger than zero. And in that case, x is bigger than 4. So x is less than negative 2, and x is bigger than 4. Is that possible? Well, if we draw a number line here, right, we just set this up. When is x less than negative 2? Well, if I have negative 2 right here, that means x could be any value this way anything smaller than negative 2. x is bigger than 4. Here's 0, here's 4. That means x is anything bigger than 4 going this way. And in this case, right, you want to figure out, is that a possible solution for this quadratic? This time you can tell that it's not possible for this to be a solution, right? Take an x value that's in this disjunction, right? A disjunction is a situation where an x value is either bigger than 4 or less than negative 2, one or the other, that's a disjunction. And here, if you try a number like, let's say, 5 for x, right? Because if x is 5, then it's bigger than 4, and it fits this disjunction. You plug it in, you get, well, do x squared, that's 25, minus 2 times 5, which is 10. What is 25 minus 10? Well, that's 15. And 15 is not less than 8, it's bigger than it. So in this case, we reject this solution. So when finding the solution to this quadratic inequality, I would just stick with my interval, where x is bigger than negative 2 and less than 4. Those values work in this case, but the other disjunction does not. So with a quadratic inequality, when, you're, when your product here, like this example, is less than 0, you know that the answer has to be the, the, the disjunction or the conjunction. The disjunction is when you have one or the other. In this case, that didn't work. But it could be the conjunction, right? Where you have, or the interval. In this case, the interval between negative two and four. One or the other will be the solution. They never both will be. Uh, because they both were, then every x value would work and that would be trivial. So here you've got to pick one or the other. And in this case, the the interval works between negative four and, and between 4 and negative 2, but the disjunction, right, where x is bigger than 4, less than negative 2, does not work. And that's the case, again, one last time before I move on, with a quadratic inequality that's a negative product, less than 0. When the product is positive, like we'll look at in the next example, it's a little bit different. So hang in there. What if I cleared this off and just rewrote it this time as x squared, right? I think I had it written as minus 2x, and then is bigger than 8. Well, now when I re rewrite this, I subtract 8 from both sides. I get x squared minus 2x minus 8, and that's now bigger than 0. And we factor this out, x plus 2 times x minus 4, it's bigger than 0. But now we're saying the product of these two terms is bigger than 0, right? This times this is larger than 0. And that means this is a positive product. Right? Multiply these two things and we get a positive result, something bigger than zero. So what are the only ways to get a positive product? Well, you can do a positive times a positive. Right? That gives you a positive product. But there's another way. right? A negative times a negative. That would also give you a positive result. So we have to take this and look at it from two different perspectives. The first one says, well, let's say x plus 2 is positive and right, x minus 4 is also a positive value. So in that case, x would be bigger than negative 2 and x would be bigger than 4. Right, I'm just solving x for both of these here. Or we would say that x plus 2 is less than 0 and x plus x minus 4, excuse me, and x minus 4 is also negative, less than 0. In this case, x is less than negative 2, and x is less than 4. 
So now we have two different solutions to this quadratic, right? This one and this one here. And what do they mean? Well, I think to really understand this, we should use a number line. So here, well, you know what? I'll clear this off right here. So the best way I think to understand this again is, is to look at, right, a number line and how it connects to this. So we set our number line up. And this first one, x is greater than negative 2 and greater than 4. So x can be anything that's bigger than negative 2, but it also has to be anything bigger than 4. So that means that I'm just going to take every number bigger than 4, right? Because every number that's bigger than 4 is already bigger than negative 2, and it solves both sets here. So I put 4 in there, and x is anything bigger than 4. So actually, my first answer can be simplified to x is anything bigger than 4. I'm just including both of those inequalities in one statement. Here in the second one, now x is anything less than negative 2 and is less than 4. Well, this time, I'm just going to say that x, here's negative 2, is anything less than negative 2, right? Because, well, if it's less than 4, it has to be less than 4 and less than negative 2, everything less than negative 2 is already less than, than negative 4, and you've got a solution. So really, this boils down to x is less than negative 2 and x is bigger than 4. Plug in those x values into this equation right here, and you'll see that both of those groups of values actually do work. Alright, hope this helps.